Thank you. Welcome. Um, let's see. Let me introduce myself first. Um, it's great to be back here. You can see I was here in, uh, I think, 1992. Um, about 20 years younger and 20 kilos younger, I think. Um, as I said, I'm uh, Rodi Robo. I am the lead developer at National Nederlander for our pension app. I'm a freelance web net developer. I'm a progress developer expert for NativeScript, which means I go to a lot of conferences to talk about NativeScript, and that's a, a framework to create um, native apps with web technologies, but it's a completely different story than this. I also organized a, a developer day last year, and I now have 992 followers on Twitter. <laughs> so please make it a thousand today. There are more than eight people here. This is the end. <laughs> Please follow me. And as you probably can see in the slides uh, later on, also I love superhero movies to relax, to watch. And fortunately, this movie never happened. This is Nicolas Cage as Superman. And he even tested out the suit in uh, 1997. I'm so happy that didn't happen. <laughs> just, look, just look at this guy. No. <laughs> so, I switched to another browser because that's what is better for this one. The first one I'm going to look is this one. This is Professor X. He's the leader of the X-Men and he uses a device called Cerebro to detect humans. Well, I try to align that with a brush API, and that's the geolocation API, uh, which provides access to the geographical location uh, from your user's device. You probably all know this one. Um, and in a few steps, you can leverage this information by um, getting the current position like this, and if you do that, you get a position back and you can ask the latitude, the longitude, the accuracy, and also the altitude. The altitude is a little, a little bit diff uh, difficult here in the Netherlands because it's probably always a zero, because, well, we're quite a flat country, right? Um, I don't know if you can see it, by the way, in the back. On the right-hand side, you see browser logos. Um, this means in which browser they are, this uh, API is uh, supported. I will point it out uh, at other APIs, but this one is supported by all the browsers nowadays. And let's try it. And the thing is, if you want to have the geolocation of a, of a user, you always have to ask permission. This is handled by the browsers themselves. And it should always run on HTTPS. And that's how it is. It gets it works way better on a mobile device than on desktops, and we can see well this is the location and it's a, well, it could be 22 meters off. And if you look at it, you get Google Maps and said, well yeah, yeah, we're pretty clear, we're pretty in the neighborhood, right? Four. I have no wielding god of thunder and lightning. So what what would uh, what uh, AK would that be? Well, battery status. Um, this could be very handy to get uh, information about the battery charge level, for instance, or the expected time of charging or discharging. And it exposes the event when information changes. So if your battery is going down, you get a signal of that and you can act on that. So you might want to turn off energy inefficient operations based on the power level. If, uh, for instance, the device only has 20% left, you might want to do more on the server than in the, in the browser itself. Um, it says below, it's supported by Chrome on desktop, it's supported by Chrome on Android, and Samsung Internet on the Android. All the other browsers don't support it. And 
for that reason, you always have to check if it's good or not. So you do that with an if statement, say, well, if navigator.get battery uh, equals to true, so it's important, then you can do stuff. And you can get it by get battery. And this is the information you can get. Is it charging or not? What is the charging time? What's the discharging time if it's not charging? And what's the current battery level? And you can also hook into the event if charging changes, so the battery is getting fuller and fuller, or if it's discharging, how many, uh, how many seconds or how many times left until it's charged, and when the level changes. So I have 50% left, now it's 49, now it's 48. And as you can see, my battery started at level uh, 35%. And it changed to 37 and it's now changing to 38. That's because I plug it in. If I plug it out now, it says its charging time has changed to infinity. Go. Oh. <laughs> there goes the lemur. So you can get information on what, what the status is and act on that. This is Black Canary. Her superpower is the Canary Cry. Um, it allows her to uh, create ultrasonic vibrations that severely damage organic and inorganic objects. Well, I thought it was suitable for the Web Audio API, which allows you to process and synthesize audio. And it's broadly supported, only not in uh, IE 11 and lower, but do we really care anymore? No? Okay. So you probably have seen this. This is um, introduced with HTML5 to play audio in, um, in your browser. And there are two different kinds of files you can load, OGG or MP3. And it can give you something like this. So let's still hope the audio is working. This is classical music, right? It was about in the 1990s or something like that. But the great artist, Paul oh, Elsa. Right? Well, this is normal to play audio. Yes, yeah, sorry. Look it up on YouTube. But if you want to make music yourself with the sounds that are available in uh, in your browser, you can do it. You can do it like this. So you first have to create something that's called an audio context. And you create an oscillator to um, generate the sound. And as you can see below you, um, say, you, you define the frequency. In this case, 220 hertz, that's pretty low. And also an oscillator type. In this case, I chose for sawtooth because I thought it sounded nice. Sounded nice. But there are different ones like sine, square, triangle, or you can create something custom. Then you have to connect the oscillator to the uh, audio context. And because audio cannot depend on the internal clock of your machine, it has its own building clock to make sure that it's always on time. If you want to make music with your laptop, that's really critical. So you can start it. And if you don't stop it, it will continue generating that tone. So in this case, I said, well, generate that tone and stop after two seconds. They're missing all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put everything together, if you put everything together, um, this is the uh, JavaScript you, uh, you're going to use. And I have some buttons below, and I want to show you what that sound. This is 220 hertz with salt, uh, salt with. Also, I have a high note. That doesn't work anymore. Thank <laughs> I just refer. I just refresh. Describe. <laughs> Oh, 
that's nice, right? Um, and I want to know if your hearing is good, so I also have a dog whistle. Let me know if you hear this one. You would be lying because there's no sound behind, it's just an empty button. So. Um, but there are way better things out there. Oh, I already know that one. Sorry. It's not great. We'll come back to that one if it's loaded. Because you can also make your own music. Does anybody remember that one? I can run some drums. Make it sound a little bit less hard. And now it's going to go That's not a good idea. Let's go to another example that's way better than I can do. This is a project from Chrome Experiments using this kind of technique, making it, making it fun also for kids to make music. I can play all night with this. They also have other fun stuff there. You get the idea, right? Let's see if the other one is loaded already. No, it's a, it's a dead end. No, I don't think so. Let's try, let's try Firefox. Oh, I see. I forgot something with the geolocation. I'll get back to it. Ah, here it is. This is also an experiment that you can do with generating sound. So. Which turn this wheel? You can. I'm not a musician. I, I used to be a DJ back in the day, but I didn't make my own music. Let's move on. This is, you know, the Hulk. Yeah. He's uh, as as Bruce Banner. He's not. He's about my size, but way, way, way lighter than me. For me, switch those two around. Um, but when it comes, it comes to help, he's very tall and, and heavy, so he, he will shake you around. Well, we have an API for that too. That's called the Vibration API. Um, thing is, Vibration API is only supported by uh, Chrome and uh, Firefox on desktop. But I haven't seen a desktop yet that has the ability to vibrate, so it's really hard to um, show you that. But it's also supported by Chrome on Android. I could, I could pass around uh, an Android device for you to fiddle, but I made sure I, uh, I re recorded it. And this is how you do it, because when it, it's not so a wireless port, you still have to do that again if you get a vibrate to make sure that it's available. And you can do it in two ways. The first one with the 200 means that it will vibrate for 200 milliseconds. And if you pause in an array at the bottom, it will vibrate for 100 milliseconds, then pulses for 200, vibrates for 300, pulses for 200, and vibrates for 500. I thought a way to demonstrate it is to put it on one of the best records ever made, which is positioned a little bit uh, like this. So if it vibrates, the phone will uh, go down and also amplify the audio with it. Oh, that's not. Can you hear something? So it will vibrate in the pattern I have given. <coughs> and if you're wondering who those fine young guys and girls are, that is the rotten and termination source way back then.
for maybe something. I want to jump back a little because I forgot it and I want to share it. Uh, I want to share that with you. If you look at geolocation, there's a good way and a better way. Normally, if you come to the site, this is uh, from the little um, grocery, a big grocery store. Um, they have a, a way to search for the nearest location. If I reload this place, Normally, yes, I was too fast. You immediately get this request to allow them to use your location. And that's not really good experience because you don't know what, what they want to do with it. If you look at this example, this is from the ritual, Rituals uh, brand. They do it when you hit this button. Uh, on the moment you say, well, I want to use my current location. So that's already a better use of, uh, of this API. Next one. Anyone know who it is? Yeah, it's now already here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have two seconds to guess, right? This is uh, Invisible Woman from X-Men. And, well, she can do a lot of stuff. Fantastic Four. Oh, sorry, Fantastic Four. Yes, she has a four on her. Uh, <laughs> ooh. Glad to see you're still awake. Thank you. Um, she has the ability to do everything with power fields, but the most important thing she can become invisible. Well, which, which API? Could reflect that page visibility API. It's uh, supported by every browser in there, and it will give you the status of, of the document if it's visible in the browser or not at that point. Um, it's very easy to use. It's document hidden and returns a true or false, and it also returns the current visibility state. So it's visible, hidden, it's pre-rendered, or it's unloaded. And the most important thing is it has an event handler, so you can hook into that, and depending on what, uh, what uh, visibility state, you can act on that. You might wonder, why? I have an example here. Um, below I said, the, well, the page visibility is visible. If I want, uh, I'm going to watch this little clip. Which back off. Susan, let's find. <coughs> let's. Susan, fire. And now she disappears. said Marco Polo. And when I watched, was watching this clip, I saw comments on YouTube that, what is Marco Polo? Do you know what, what this is, Marco Polo? Yeah? Well, if you don't know, you can, I just opened a new tab, and what, what happened? If you can see it, the video is paused. So it's not visible anymore. The video is paused, I can look for Marco Polo game. I'm not sure if, if it's fast enough. Yeah, it's fast enough. And it says the game said the player who it shouts, Marco and the other player must respond with Polo. So he's doing it wrong, by the way. He's saying Marco Polo himself. She should say Polo. <laughs> but now that we know it, we can finish this video. And it just continues at the same spot we left. And also you see that now page visibility is getting even more. And she's having a like hard time. The flash. Well, the flash can do one thing very good, and that's run at very high speeds. And to make sure he you get a feeling that he's there. He was there and it's gone and it's really fast. So this is a bit of a stretch. Online offline status. Um, this is also a pretty simple API, but uh, could be very useful uh, in a progressive enhancement way. Um, 
what indicates that the user is still connected to a network. Remember, network. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's connected to the internet. If you're on a corporate network, still be off of the internet. But it gives you a little uh, information. Um, it's easy to uh, get uh, the information by navigator.online. And you can hook into events like online and offline. So, for instance, if you have a website with a lot of input fields, uh, a large form they have to fill, um, you can continually check if they still have a network connection, maybe hoping that's an internet connection. And if it goes offline, then you can inform them that they are offline and they don't, will not hit the submit button and might lose all the information they are entering. So in this case, I'm online. I've turned the Wi-Fi off. I'm offline. Turn it on again. And I'm online again. All right, next one. Batman. He's a superhero protector, yeah, but what are his superpowers? Does anybody know? Rich. <laughs> Taking the fun out of this. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. <laughs> yeah. So what API could, could be hooked into this? The payment request API, almost good. Um, the payment request API is a really promising uh, API because it takes a lot of uh, work away from you. You don't have to create checkout forms anymore, for instance. Unfortunately, it's only working on Chrome and uh, Edge. It's also working on uh, Safari, but it's with their own implementation of Apple Pay. Um, of course, but they're working towards uh, the same uh, API. And what you can do is you, first you have to uh, initialize the payment request. And then, so you create a function for that, and you said, well, the networks I want to support, in this case, are American Express and Visa. And then the supported instruments are uh, the methods. Basic card means I want to use a credit or debit card. And you have to supply some data, saying the supported networks, in this case, are the defined networks, so uh, American Express and Visa, and the supported types are debit and credit. Just a little setup of what you want to support in that uh, dialog. Then the details, it's, there is a lot there, but also I have to scroll a little bit. But you essentially say, well, I have, if I skip total, you have display items. There you, in JavaScript, you define all the items that are available in the, uh, in the card with their value. And on top you have the total, uh, which sums up all the uh, items. And as a last thing, you have to return a new payment request with that information. So it can be used by the API. If you put that together with some uh, dots in there to hide all the extra stuff, this, this function you create, and you create a function called donate, because that's, that will respond to the, say, the browser click on the button, for instance. You have to check, again, if payment requests are Supported. So that's the first if statement. Otherwise, we initialize a payment request and we um, uh, fire another uh, function called on by click with that request in there. And what does that function do? It takes that request object, it will show the dialog, and the then means, well, respond to whatever happens there. Um, now it goes to a dummy function, say you go to a payment server somewhere, and if something goes wrong, it gets into the catch. But the most important thing is the show in this case. Because we can... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. We can create our own payment request. Um, I do feel a little bit sorry for Nicholas Cage not being Superman, so let's help him. So if I click on here, I get a native dialog with my, um, this, this is my card essentially. So 
I said the bar highs for 10,000 euros. Uh, you can donate and help uh, Nicolas Cage to be to become Superman. I thought, well, we're brought, uh, we're can go to them, so we give a little discount for 10 euros. And you can get details here if you uh, press that arrow. Go back. And then you go to, yeah, it's Dutch, sorry, it's a Dutch browser. So you put in your uh, American Express or Visa number here. I don't have either, so I go to a fake, uh, I cancel it because I have to go to the fake credit card generator for American It's great. Um, good. Can regenerate very good, but he also is very illiterate. So I'm Groot. That's almost everything he can say, right? I'm Groot. So I thought it would be wise to put him on the speed synthesis API, and that API makes it possible to essentially do text to speech. But all you can also modify the pitch or the rate, or even if it's British English, US English, or Australian English. So let's have a look. It's now in Dutch, so I could say. Hello, hello. But if I take, for instance, I haven't tried Tesla yet with, from South Africa, I think. Welcome to WordCamp Rotterdam. And if she had a bad night last night at the speaker dinner? Welcome to WordCamp Rotterdam. Oh, that's okay. Welcome to WordCamp Rotterdam. A little bit too much to drink, I think. Welcome to WordCamp Rotterdam. <laughs> Victoria has had a rough night, definitely. Um, but she's American, so she probably sounds more like. <laughs> This, I think. Welcome to London. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, all these are provided by a browser. All these languages and all these, say, uh, dialects, not the correct word, but this language uh, variations. And if you look at the bottom, you see you'll see all kinds of Google saying that those work only in Google browsers. They are um, be fetched from the Google services. So I'm not sure what's different with Alex. Hello, what's going on today? Oh. Hi, bro. Hi, bro. Hello, what's going on today? It's a female voice. Okay, next one. It's the Wolverine. And the Wolverine. Well, can regenerate too, but it has also has uh, other things like super hearing. So, what could be useful in super hearing? Which which API would reflect that? It's the speech recognition API, and that's the other way around. It converts speech input into text. It's also only supported by uh, Chrome and uh, Samsung Internet, and it's fairly easy to use. You instantiate a speech recognition object. Um, you can say if it's continuous or not, and that means will it keep on listening even if I stop talking. And you can say if you want interim results or not. That means if I'm talking for a long time, if it's false, then it will wait until I'm finished. And if it's set to true, it will uh, give results in the meantime. And that's more of use to use because you can see if it's still correct. And the thing you have to set, because it doesn't know if you're Dutch, English, German, or whatever, is to what language tag he, uh, he has to listen. So it is the ENGB or NNL, NLNL, or some other one. You start it, and if you're finished, you stop it, and there's an event listener that listens to that intermediate result. So will be displayed. Let's hope the Democrats are with us, because this is going over the internet. This is not locally in the browser. 
and it's in English. Hello world can brother them. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I have to make a video of that or a better internet connection. I'm sorry for that. It's completely gone. Sorry for that. No worries, you can try this out yourself. In the end, there's a link to a website that you can try this. And going further on with Dr. Strange, you can do a lot of things, magic for uh, particularly. And I think web Bluetooth is kind of magic. And I have some demos there, and I'm hoping that will work also. Um, I have this little device, I will put it on. It has LEDs in it, and you can send messages to it. Let's see if I can connect. It's called the Timebox Mini. Yep, yeah, it's there. And I heard, a, I heard a little blink saying, I'm connected. So I can do stuff like that. Can you see it like this? Yeah. I can say, uh, Rotterdam as well. And it will make sure that the flag of Rotterdam is there. <laughs> it's not as fast as you can say, well, put all the LEDs there, but it, it will make sure it's one by one. Um, I have a little question for you. Does anybody know what landmark in Rotterdam this is? This is their logo. Oh, sorry. Well, um, I clear it first. <laughs> Anyone knows the logo of this building? It's the place I work in. Switch there. It's this one. It's the logo of Del Support. That's the building next to the next to the uh, railway station. Or guess the next one. Then. Anyone? Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, correct. If I load this page again. Oh, it's, you see it's a loading there also. All right. Almost there. Let's do something scary now. I, <laughs> sorry about it. I can connect to a, a LED light. I put it out for you. And I can say, well, show me some colors. And it will randomly show some colors. I don't know if you can see it in the back. Should I hold it up for you? <laughs> it will now just generate colors. But what you can also do, and if you're on Twitter, get your mobile phone. Because it listens to tweets. Um, if you tweet to add browser APIs and put a color name behind that, red, green, or whatever, or an RGB value or a hex value, it will listen to that. So there's one for, oh, sorry, my mistake. Connecting this one. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know that feeling that it works when you're testing it outside? That's the feeling I have now. Um, I'll make sure there are, will be a video of it. Um, unfortunately, it will not work in <laughs> Chrome because they have cross-platform problems if you want to use that. I'm sorry. I have to round it up. 
This is um, Wonder Woman. She can do a lot. Super healing, telepathy, omni-healing wisdom. Yeah, I like that one very much. And yes, she's a supernatural beauty also. And she has super strength if she removes her bracelets. Which refers to there are a lot of other APIs out there also. You have the notification API. You can send messages on the right bottom of, of the right top of the, of the user screen. We really like those, right? Um, home screen installation and surface workers APIs. You can use that for progressive, progressive web apps. Media capture API. You saw something with audio, you can do the same with video. Device memory API. How many uh, memory is in the device? Not how many is available, but how many is there? Screen orientation, device orientation. Screen orientation uh, is it landscape or um, portrait, device orientation mean also is it tilted a little bit to the left or the right so you can make a game with it on, for instance, on, on an iPhone or an Android phone. And network information, are you on Wi-Fi or 2G or 3G? And a scary one, web USB. Uh, you can hook into connected USB devices. And I have to say, Thank you.